Hey animators! So this is the video that will show you how to ink and color in Photoshop with video layers. This is going to be a really quick tutorial so if anything doesn't make sense feel free to reach out to me otherwise just kind of uh, rewind the video and rewatch everything that I'm doing. Hopefully it's going to make sense. Um, but if not, again, reach out to me through email or uh, maybe Aaron in the animation studio, or you can always make appointments with the tutors in the learning center. Okay, so let's just jump into it. I've got this little run cycle that I've done really quickly. It's super rough. It doesn't have a ton of detail, but it's perfect for showing you how to kind of take it to the next step with inking and coloring. So I'll go ahead and turn that off. What I want to do is look at my layers here um, or excuse me this is my timeline I'm gonna bring my layers down I've got two different screens open so some of these things are kind of hiding on you um, so yours will look more like these frame animations here are some layer uh, video layer animations that I or layers that I've done like the, the hair and the feet on for various reasons I'm gonna just close that up and then in my layers panel I'm also gonna close that up kind of clean this up and I'm going to lower the opacity a little bit so I can kind of focus on my ink. Um, so okay let's throw a video layer on here so we can start doing the ink outlines. I'm going to go to layer, video, oops not vector mask, video layer. So let me do that again. Layer, click on the other desktop, layer, video layers, new blank video layer. So it's going to create a video layer and what a video layer is again is just a layer that already has all the frames in it. So if I arrow over whatever I'm seeing um, wherever my playhead is, what I'm seeing is what's drawn on that layer. If I make a mark right here. If I arrow to the frame ahead of that, that mark will disappear. If I go back to that frame, it exists, go forward, it disappears again. So let me delete that. I'm going to go way back to the beginning. I'm going to go back to black and white because I'd like to do just a classic inked outline. And um, I've got my brush tool activated. So I'm just going to use this layer to start inking. So I'm going to name it. Double click on that. Name it ink. And I'm not going to do a ton of this work because you guys are kind of going to figure out what inking style works best for you. But I just have sort of the default um, hard round pressure size brush. So there's a pressure sensitivity on this brush. Um, with the smoothing, I'm going to turn that up just a little bit. Smoothing will kind of stabilize your brush slightly. Um, whether people like that or not is up to you. So you can play around with that and kind of see what that does for you. Um, so let's say I come in here and I'm going to do this really quick again just for sort of tutorial keeping things quick sake um, you know what actually I don't like this brush at all um, I'm gonna delete that I just hit command A to select everything and then hit delete key and I'm gonna hit command D to deselect I'm gonna bring my brushes down here and just show you guys this really quick you should all have access to all of these brushes so Photoshop comes with actually a nice amount of some brushes from a guy named Kyle. I can't remember. I think it's Kyle Webster. I can't remember what his name is. Um, but he has these brushes that are set up to sort of mimic pencils, charcoal, um, and you can see those in the dry brushes, in the wet brushes. This is where I like the inking brushes. So I like his ultimate thick, thin, thin inking brush. So I'm going to pick that one. Again, if you don't know how to get your brushes palette up, it's windows and then brushes. So that's easy. I'm going to move this guy over. Um, so you can see I've got um, a nice brush that has sort of an oval shape to it, which will allow me to get some of that nice rounded, or um, sorry, not rounded, uh, variation between thick and thin. So I'm going to just shrink my brush a little bit. I'm pushing the open and close brackets to um, increase or decrease the size of that brush. And again, since I grabbed a new brush, it took off the smoothing. I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit of smoothing in there. And then I'm just going to come in and start kind of, oh, that's too thick, inking some of this. So I am on that blue video layer. Yeah, I like this line a lot better than that other one. 
I would like you guys to spend a lot more time inking on this. And obviously I'm not going to ink this entire character because that would take too long for this tutorial. But I just want to get enough on here to show you a bit of some other stuff that you'll need to do with inking and coloring. Um, so yeah, talking and thinking and drawing at the same time is tough. I'm going to try to just do this as fast as possible just to get something cute so you guys can see what I'm talking about. Well, I don't know how cute it is. Again, I can't think and talk and draw at the same time. <laughs> so I'm just tracing. Okay. So um, I've got my character inked now, and that's all on this ink layer. So if I turn my um, rough layer off with the rough animation, you can see just the inked outlines. So this is, you can kind of tell when I turn off that rough, like there's a lot of quality that was lost with me just kind of going in and doing that really quick outline. So that's why it's really important for you to sit there and spend a lot of time inking this and making it look really nice because you're going to lose some of that detail if you don't. And it's going to kind of start to become stiff and just I don't know, not as engaging as it could be. So inking is a really tough beast and you're gonna just have to take this homework uh, assignment and figure out your own inking style and what you like. Um, maybe some of you are really stellar digital artists and so this won't be a problem for you. Um, me, not so much, I'm not an inker really. So um, again, you're gonna kind of see the difference between styles, between your rough and the inked. But moving on to kind of keep this short, um, you'll see if I arrow over, uh, what happens here is I have this file set up to be 24 frames per second, but I've animated on twos. So each one of these frames in my run cycle is two frames. It's one drawing that's held for two frames. So technically my run cycle is running on 12 frames per second um, because of that hold. But the video layers will assume the frame rate that you your document has. And so it's going to have a new frame for every, um, it's, there's going to be 24 frames per second in this. So what I need to do is duplicate this image onto this frame so that it's being held. Because if I come in here and I try to draw exactly what I just drew, um, you're going to see the changes. Like there's no way I can draw that exact Obviously, I'm not a robot. Um, so, um, sorry, trying to undo. Okay, there we go. That's nice and clean. So what I want to do is duplicate this frame. And you can do that very easily. Make sure your uh, video layer that you want to duplicate the frame in is selected. Line your playhead up to the frame so you can see the frame that you're duplicating. Go to Layer video layers and simply choose duplicate frame. So now you can see as I arrow over that inked outline is on frame one as well as frame two. When I move to frame three I lose it. So that is how you'll ink your character. I want you to go through and do that. So if you're working like me on 24 frames per second but you're holding each image you'll have to duplicate these frames. If you're not, if each one of your images is only one frame long, you don't have to worry about duplicating the frame. You can just go frame by frame and ink it um, on that video layer. Hopefully that makes sense to you. Okay, so then coloring will be the same thing. Um, you can just kind of come to your layers panel and I like to choose, so I want, I want my color layer to exist in between the ink layer and on top of the group one layers. So I'm going to choose group one because when I make a new layer, it's going to create it on top of that layer. So choose the, choose the layer you want it to live on top of. Make sure your playhead is in the timeline where you want it to begin. Go to layer, video layers, new blank video layer. So here is my new blank video layer and I'm going to call this one color. So let's, uh, let's start coloring this. I'm going to pick a color. I don't want to do kind of classic colors. Let's make this character sort of a bluish. 
So uh, you can you can change up your brushes if you want. You can take the smoothing off of it for coloring. You don't really need smoothing. It's more about getting that color to just kind of live inside of that outline. Right, so you'll just come in here and kind of start to brush in your color. Uh, you can be messy if you want and go outside of the lines because you can come in and erase just that color and it's not going to affect your lines because your lines are on a different layer. So that's why that's really good. Um, you want to work on separate layers for the ink and color. Don't put them on the same layer. Cool. So again, I'm not going to do all of this because you guys get the idea and it would be really boring to watch me sit here and ink and color. So I'm just kind of throwing down some flat color um, and um, there are a multitude of ways to do this. So please utilize your own skills in Photoshop if you are really great with um, specific kind of brushes or you want to throw some texture down on this. Anything your heart desires, you can. Um, but I just wanted to show you how to just simply like throw down a quick flat color using the brush. So I have my ink and my color layers and I am going to have to go ahead and go, if I go forward, I have to duplicate that frame again. So let me show you that process one more time. So line your playhead up in front of the frame you want to duplicate and go to layer, video layers, duplicate frame. So now you'll see that that color exists there for those two frames and then it goes to the next one. Um, so yeah, then your job is just going to go through, you got to go through your whole walk cycle, uh, throw down an ink, throw down a color. You don't have to ink it. Uh, if your, your coloring technique is a lineless style, that's perfectly fine. Um, just make sure you get some color on your character and get it into a finished quality. And then what do we do? We want to render this out. So I'm not going to render this obviously because this is, um, not finished. So let me go to a different, different file that I do have finished. This isn't a walk cycle. This is a little ballerina that I did a couple, maybe a year ago. Um, but this works for showing you rendering. So, um, let's, let's watch, watch the little ballerina kind of moving. So cute, simple file, um, kind of a sketchy color. So again, your color doesn't have to be a flat, perfect color. You can play with brush brushes and shading and technique, um, textures and things like that. So let's render this character out. But the important thing to remember is that I would like this character to have a transparent background. So right now I have to come in and turn her background layers off. And then when I render this, I will just get the character. So we're rendering an image sequence. So what we want to have happen is for Photoshop to save a new image of each frame. And I think that this is a one second piece and I'm working at 24 frames per second. So I have 24 images that I need to render out. Um, and again, this one's, this one's set up to be on twos. So um, if I arrow over, the first two frames are the same image and then it changes. So really this is on 12s or on twos, uh, 12 frames per second, but I am actually working at 24 frames per second. Anyways, that doesn't, that doesn't matter. So what we want to do for rendering this out, we want to make sure that our in and out points are set up for just the animation that we want to render. You'll go to file, export, render video. So same way that we made those videos for the bouncing balls. Uh, Photoshop might have to think for a little bit. Uh, you kind of see my my cursor change to that icon. That just means it's thinking. Um, so, okay, we're going to render out 24 images. So we need to make a folder to house all those images because I don't want those images to just live willy-nilly on my desktop. I'm going to lose track of them. So make sure you select a folder to save those to. Um, so I already have this folder here on my desktop called renders, which I like to put things in for these tutorials, but inside of that folder, I'm going to make another new folder. So I'm just going to call this folder ballerina. You don't need to name this folder, last name, first name, underscore the project, because this is just something for you for your own reference. So, okay, I'll hit choose. Um, ballerina pirouette. That's fine. Again, the name doesn't really matter for this because we are bringing this into After Effects and then we'll save it out as a different, different name format later. So name it anything your heart desires. Okay. So then we need to change this menu here from media encoder to Photoshop image sequence. 
we need to pick a format that supports transparencies. So I know that PNGs or TIFFs support transparencies. I like PNGs. I, I don't really, I mean, there's no, you don't have to do it that way. It's whatever you prefer, but just it has to support an image or a transparency. Um, so here the starting number means what so basically Photoshop is going to save out these 24 images, but it needs to know what to name them so they all have a different name. And it's just going to name them sequentially. So starting at zero, which is fine. So this will be called Ballerina Pirouette Zero. And then the next one will be called Ballerina Pirouette Zero One, Zero Two, Zero Three. But we need, we need them named in order like that in order to bring them into After Effects. Um, this digits is just kind of telling you what your frame padding is here, so how many how many hundreds or thousands, tens, thousands, tens, hundreds, thousands of images are you rendering out? We're only doing 24, so four is a little bit overkill, but I'm just going to leave it. That's totally fine. Make sure your document size matches up to your um, document size, 24 frames per second. Perfect. I'm going to make sure that my range here is set to my work area. And then you want to make sure you set up the alpha channel in this. So set your alpha channel to straight unmatted. So that's going to support that transparency. So we can see through this character to the background once we start to put it together in After Effects. Once you've done all of that, you are good to go. You can just go ahead and hit render. If you choose PNG, um, Photoshop's going to come up with this PNG format options. Just go ahead and click OK. Really doesn't matter. Um, and then it's going to think for a little bit and export things. And once it's done, nothing happens. So you have to go, let me get my doc out, navigate to where we saved that. Um, let's see, sorry, I have the two different screens up. So uh, in, in my teaching, I think, no, I have to navigate and figure out where I saved that. Um, might have to edit this <laughs> video a little bit because uh, I don't remember where I saved that exactly. If that's your, if that's you, and this is the case where you're like, shoot, I don't remember where I saved it. A really slick way to actually go and remember where that folder path was is you can go back to file um, export. Where's my export? There it is. And then go to render video. And then you'll get that path back up right here. So I can see like, okay, so it was document 2009 animations renders ballerina. So I can cancel that once I memorize this path, and then I can go back to my doc. And that was in 2009, animations, renders, ballerina. There we go. So there are all of my images now. So you can see each one of these is a new image. I arrow through this. It's almost like we're watching the animation happen kind of in slow-mo. Um, so this is what you need to bring into After Effects. So you need to render out an image sequence of your walk cycle uh, with a transparent background. Okay, thanks everyone. That's all I have for this demo. And uh, stay tuned. We'll take a look at the After Effects demo in just a little bit.